any species which gives H plus proton or hydronium ion. When H plus adds, uh, gets added with the water, it's hydrogen. So it's same thing in water. So any species which gives proton in water or H plus in water is called acid. For example, HCl. HCl, when you dissolve in water, it gives H plus and Cl minus. Since it gives H plus, then it is an acid. HCl plus water, H plus aqueous. Because S plus is uh, surrounded by water molecule. Similarly, chlorine is surrounded by water molecule. So this was the definition of acid. Very simple definition. You know, you know this definition. I, uh, okay. So base. What is an base? What is an RNS base? Is any species which gives OH minus in water. Okay. So like sodium hydroxide. When sodium hydroxide are dissolved in water, it gives sodium and hydroxide ion. So this was the Basic definition of acid and bases, and this you, you also know that what is an acid, you are directly say H2SO4 or HCl, you put it in water, it becomes H plus. Similarly, sodium hydroxide, you know, all right. So, this is the basic definition of acid and bases in terms of Arrhenius. Now, as per Arrhenius, acid neutralization reaction is that reaction, okay, uh, which, uh, okay. So, in a neutralization reaction, a compound produces H plus, which is called acid, and the base base produces OH minus, which is a base, to, and that S plus and OH minus reacts to form the water. Okay, this is the basic concept of RNS for neutralization reaction. Okay, so H, acid produces H plus, and uh, base produces OH minus and this actually is in H plus and OH minus reacts to give you water and salt. So as per RNA's definition, neutralization reaction is this, where acid is producing H plus and base is producing OH minus and the product is salt and water. All right. So because there is a salt formation in this uh, acid base reaction, this type of reaction is also called salt formation reaction. This was the basic of Arrhenius. So, hence, for as per Arrhenius concept, the acid uh, neutralization is reaction is nothing but a combination of H plus and OH minus in an aqueous solution to give water. Now, now this is done. Okay, this is this is simple concept and simple neutralization reaction we understood. Okay, understood, guys. It's very simple, right? Isn't it? All right. Now, what is the utilities of concept? What are the utilities? What are the application of RNS concept? And why? What are its disadvantages? What it cannot explain? Now, it, real things comes up. Now, aqueous solution of non-metallic oxides, oxides which is made up of from right side of the periodic table. Okay, like carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, sulfur trioxide. Nitrogen trioxide, phosphorus uh, oxide, phosphorus uh, decoxide. All right. Now, why this carbon dioxide is why is carbon dioxide acidic? Uh, uh, solution of carbon dioxide is acidic. All right. Solution of carbon dioxide is in your coke and all you get now in your cold drinks. Okay. Or uh, acid rain. Okay. So, why this solution of this uh, non metallic oxides are acidic? This, ex this is nicely explained by your RNS concept. Please bear in mind that this concept, please bear in mind. I'll ask you why carbon sulfur dioxide solution in water is acidic. Okay. Acid rain occurs because of this carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide, isn't it? Now, it's because when sulfur oxide combines with water, they produce this as S2SO4, which in turn gets ionized to give S plus and S4 to minus. So basically, except they are not supplying uh, uh, proton, but when they combine with water, they are producing the corresponding acid, and hence they are they are acidic in nature. Like N2O5, nitrogen pentoxide combining with uh, water to give nitric acid. And nitric acid, as you know, that how it does it behaves. How does it uh, ionizes in water? Okay, got it, guys. 
so most of the non metallic oxides in water is an uh, acidic substance acidic they are acidic aqueous solution of this non metal oxides are acidic now this i think you are learning for the first time and please bear in mind why they are acidic okay similarly understood similarly the oxides of metals no me metals and non metals are just opposite you know that similarly the oxides of metals oxides of metals in water they are basic in nature please remember this one this i will ask you the question and you have to answer me like this only not like this most probably like this only more or less with the example you cannot write some other things all right um, but you have to write in a related in manner for example calcium oxide calcium oxide when calcium oxide is uh, dissolved in water it produces calcium hydroxide and uh, you know that as you know that calcium hydroxide produces os minus it is so calcium uh, solution of calcium metal oxide calcium oxide in water is basic in nature its ph is more than 7 whereas ph of carbon dioxide in water is less than 7 or sulfur trioxide is less than 7 similarly sodium oxide so all the metals metal oxides remember you write in your copy or wherever you want to write write okay all the metal oxides most of the metal oxides when they are combined in water they are they are basic in nature all the non metal oxides when they are uh, their solution in water is acidic in nature because of this equations okay ammonia in water produces ammonium hydroxide see whenever you use uh, ammonia in uh, lab it is not actual ammonia it is ammonium hydroxide we we make the solution and hence that ammonium hydroxide is a basic solution because it is producing os minus ion which is rnas bases okay guys is it okay is it okay yes sir good very good sir okay good good bridge okay if you if you get any confusion please ask me okay mm. it is very simple so this theory also explains that how the neutralization occurs and in water and why the acid base reacts with each other and neutralization occurs in water so these are the very good uh, you know uh, example and uh, application that we got from rns bases which could explain non metallic acidity of non metallic non metallic oxide solution and basicity of and the neutralization reaction Okay. Now, what is this? Is the most previous, most earliest concepts of acid and bases? Okay. Now, what is the problem with uh, this? It explicitly says that it should occur in water. If water is not present, they cannot behave as uh, independently as acid and bases, which is not true. For example, HCl is acid in dissolved in water, but HCl is also acid in gaseous state so when there is no water how hcl is acting as a acid okay this thing is not explained by our uh, rns concept remember that in the lab and all never uh, never leave hcl solutions open it has to be covered because hcl gets vaporized and it is acidic in nature and it corrodes not only uh, the other um, equipment but your health also it goes inside you when you breathe in and it corrodes your health uh, this thing also okay so hcl and all should not be kept outside in open all right now that is the reason so hcl how hcl is acting as a how hcl is acting as a uh, acid in gaseous state it cannot expand because it said that it explicitly required water so another point is arena said that this acid base neutralization occurs only in water but which is not true in gaseous phase also uh, gaseous ammonia reacts with gaseous uh, hcl to give solid ammonium chloride solution all right this we did in our chloride ion detection i guess in the lab isn't it this the gaseous things comes up then you you, uh, you take a rod dip in the ammonia and you when put it you get a fume something like that white fumes isn't it so in the gaseous gaseous phase also reaction is occurring neutralization reaction is occurring which is which cannot be explained by 
your RMS concept. No, th third point is acid and bases undergoes on dissociation only in water. The uh, RMS concept is said that acid and base dissociates only in water. But there are certain reactions where pure liquid ammonia, pure sulfur dioxide are used where acid and bases are getting dissociated. So this cannot be explained by uh, RNS. It's called non echo solvents. When you don't, instead of water, if you use other solvents, they are called non echo solvents. So reactions are happening in non echo solvents also. So those things, RNS concept cannot explain. Okay. All right. Got it till now? Understood? The RNS concept is uh, application, is definition, is example, is application, and is uh, limitations. Have you understood, guys? Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay, good, very good. Yes, sir. Now let's move to the another concept which explains acid and bases more in a better manner okay it's called bronsted lowry concept or it's also called protonic concept because proton is involved in the first one is water concept okay rns is water concept this is proton concept now as per this uh, theory acids are those species molecular or ion anything which loses a proton h plus and base are those species which gains a proton so here they they are not talking about anything which uh, produces hydroxide ion or not acid takes up the gives up the proton base takes up the proton that's all bronsted uh, definitions is okay for example hcl hcl produces uh, h plus and hence h hcl is a bronsted acid now chloride ion takes up H plus and hence chloride ion is a bronze state base. Okay, ammonia ammonia takes a proton and hence ammonia uh, ammonia is a bronze state base. Okay, so ammonium ion loses H plus and hence ammonium uh, ion is bronze state acid. So simple. So whichever species you see losing electron is a bronze state acid, and whichever species you see taking up electron is the Bronsted base. Okay, got it. Am I going too fast or is it okay? I think this is okay because uh, these are the very simple concepts. So bronsted means protonic. Losing proton is acid. Getting proton is base. Very simple. Few examples of bronsted acids are S2S. When S2S is there, it can lose one proton or two proton giving proton and thi thiol group so s2s is acidic have you have you smell s2s is very pungent smell in your lab i think you have done or not i don't know in your class 11 and 12 have you uh, have you These are the examples of bronsted acid. CO uh, is losing two hydrogens. So all the species which are losing protons are all bronsted acids. Okay. So what kind of bronsted acids are there? So here, see, someone is losing one proton, someone is losing two protons. All right. Okay. So there are two types uh, of uh, bro bronsted acids. One is monoprotonic and another is polyprotonic. Monoprotonic acids are those acids which loses only one electron, uh, one proton. For example, hydrogen fluoride and acetic acid. So hydrogen fluoride is losing only one proton, and hence it is monoprotonic. Okay. But there are some acids which can lose uh, two or more uh, protons. 
and they are called polyprotonic. Matlab, poly means many, proton, protonic means proton, losing protons. For example, S2S is losing two protons, so it is diprotonic or polyprotonic. All right. Here also it is losing two protons, and hence it is polyprotonic. Okay, guys, this is very simple, right? There is no uh, point of getting confused here. So, uh, bronze state bases, similarly, bronze state bases are those bases which can absorb, uh, if it can absorb, uh, take up except one electron, uh, one proton, then this monoprotonic base, and if it can ex accept more than two protons, two or more than two protons, they are called polyprotonic base. For example, SO4 sulfate ion can take up two hydrogen atoms, except so it is pro polyprotonic base. Similarly, phosphate ion can take up three protons, so it is uh, so it is polyprotonic base. Okay. Okay, guys. So this is very simple. There is no uh, point of getting confused here. Now another one very simple concept is all RNS acids are also bronze state acids, but all RNS bases are not bronze state bases. It means that since all the RNS acids produces S plus ions in solution or uh, in solution, so as per bronze state definition also, all the uh, species which is producing S plus ion is a acid. So both uh, all RNS acids are bronze state acids because all RNS acids producing S plus. But conversely, RNS, for example, HCl, S2S, all are producing in water or wherever, it is producing proton. So it is bronze state acid also, RNS as well as bronze state. But RNS bases are where those bases which produces hydroxide in aqueous solution. Okay, but the hydroxide in aqueous solution is they, they are not accepting any hydrogen proton. So this all RNS bases are not bronze acid because here there is no no uh, reaction of uh, accepting proton. It is only producing OH minus. This is RNS base. RNA, as per RNS definition, it is true. But this is not as per your Bronsted definition because Bronsted has to take uh, proton in the reaction. Understood? Mm. This one understood? Or do you want me to come again? This one. Hello? Hello? Who again? Hello? Yes, sir. <clears throat> sir, so, please repeat. Which one? This one? All, all, all RNS bases? This one? <clears throat> yes, sir. Okay. So, this, this question is highly probable in your exam or test. Okay, so try and understand now only so that you can write in your examination properly. Because what I've observed is you listen and you are not writing the pro, uh, properly in your uh, this. And regarding the our assignment also, please write properly. Show me once whether the answer is correct or not. Then I'll tell you to write those answers. Okay, don't write randomly. All right. Now, I've asked you why all RNS acids are Bronsted acid, but all RNS bases are not Bronsted bases. Is because, as per RNS definition, acids are those species which produces S plus ion in the solution. Similarly, Bronsted acid definition is same. Any species which produces S plus ion, whether in, uh, uh, whether in solution, water or not. So that means, are all the RNS acid since producing proton? That means it is a bronze acid. Okay. 
for example hcl and h2 so in water because it is producing hydrogen ion or proton but what is rns basis rns base is nothing but which produces hydroxide ion but as per bronsted acid any species which <coughs> absorbs proton is base here sodium hydroxide is not absorbing any proton it's just getting dissolved in water so it, since it is not producing uh, exiting any proton here hence this base is not a bronsted base for a bronsted base to undergo it has to take up proton like here ammonia is taking up one proton to become ammonium ammonium ion so this kind of species has to be there then only it is bronsted base since sodium hydroxide is not taking up any proton here hence it is not a bronsted base okay all right so here there is no taking up of uh, proton and hence it is not a bronsted base now another very important concept comes into play is this is this is the this is the modern definitions of acid and bases it is called conjugate acid pair base okay it comes from bronsted uh, concept only whenever whenever acid rea acid base re reaction takes place it it is it is not defining as a neutralization re reaction but it says that when a acid and base reaction takes place it gives another product as acid and base which is called conjugate acid and conjugate base for example hcl is reacting with ammonia to give ammonium ion and chloride so hcl is being hcl is in acid and it gives a chloride ion which is a base so hcl is an acid whose conjugate base is chloride ion ammonia is a base and is reacting with taking up the proton and it is becoming acid which is ammonium ion positive ions are mostly acid okay so positive so this so this ammonia base is giving a conjugate acid as so in a acid base reaction always an acid gives conjugate base and the base gives conjugate acid all right so this is called conjugate acid base base and stability of this conjugate base pairs and all gives the relative strength of acids how which acid is more stronger or less stronger acid is mostly explained by conjugate acid pair pair theory if for example this acl is strong acid m ammonia base is strong base if they give weak acid and weak base then these two are strong acid and strong base so so reaction gets completed but if they give if they are weak and they are strong that means they will combine recombine back to give the uh, reactants okay so that means they are weak acid and weak base answer understood or once more you want me to say about a conjugate acid and conjugate base sir so, once again okay, okay good one second so whenever acid and base reacts earlier in the rns concept we say that we get only salt and water but the new kens concept tells us that whenever acid and base reacts it gives another conjugate acid and base pairs okay so acid for example hcl acid reacting with ammonia base to give ammonium acid and base chloride now when hcl is getting reacted and it is it is losing one it is being converted to base so hcl is an acid and its base it gives the base which is chloride ion chloride ion ion is a base so acid one is giving base one so conjugate base of hcl is chloride ion similarly when base reacts with acid it gives a conjugate acid it becomes acidic because base is taking one proton so it has extra proton so it becomes acidic so conjugate base uh, acid of base 2 that is ammonia is acid 2 that is ammonium ion all right now so this now if 
you want to tell about the strength of SH, whether HCl and MNH uh, strong or not, it depends upon the stability of conjugate base and pair. If they are stable, then they are very strong. This will come to come to uh, in the later uh, half of the um, lecture. I'll I'll uh, explain this uh, stability of conjugate base and pair nicely. But you here you need to understand that this is the pair. The this is base is conjugate. Once it takes us to the proton, it becomes acid, and hence its base uh, conjugate acid becomes NS4. And acid once it, once it gives up the proton, then it becomes base. Then it becomes base. So this is a conjugate acid base pair. You know which one is acid, which one is base, right? So this is the concept. So whenever any species takes up the proton, that species is uh, base and the product will be acidic. So these are these are called conjugate acid base pairs. Okay. All right. Example. Okay. Now, here is the example. When you take HCN and water, HCN is giving up the proton. This is acid, right? Acid one, and it is becoming CN minus. CN CN minus is a base, so it is the conjugate base of HCN, acid HCN. Water, water is a base, is acting as a base here, and it is taking up one. Uh, proton and it becoming H3O plus. So water is a base here and its conjugate acid is H3O plus. So whichever gets the electron is a conjugate acid, whichever loses the electron is a conjugate base. Okay. Another example is H2S and water. Hydrogen sulfide in water. Here hydrogen sulfide is losing one electron, uh, losing one proton and it is becoming SH minus. So it is acid, its conjugate base is uh, SH minus, HS minus. And water is, water is uh, acting as a base here and its conjugate acid is H3O plus. What is acting as a base here and conjugate acid is hydronium ion. Another example is, okay, this you might get confused with the water because water, okay. Another example is when a, uh, HCl and C, like that electrode potential values are also now, acidity and basicity are not that fixed always, all right? Okay, it depends on the other species. If HCl is acidic in, in, in front of sodium hydroxide, it is acting as a uh, acid. But in, in front of stronger acid like HF, it will act as a base. Okay, because like oxidation and reduction reaction, it has to be acid base reaction acid acid cannot react base base cannot react it has to be one hand, one species has to act as a base one ha has to act as a acid here in this case since hcl and acidic acid is there both are acidic but as, since hcl is more stronger than acidic acid acidic acid though is very in beginner vinegar also we have been all right now hcl is acting as acid and where hcl gives up one electron uh, one proton to the acetic acid, it becomes chloride minus. So, as the conjugate base of HCl is chloride minus, whereas this is acting as a base and it takes up one proton, and this is the conjugate acid of acetic acid. Okay, so it's depending upon the strength. For example, see water. Water, see, carbonate is a highly basic species, highly basic species. When it in front of water, water acts as an acid. So it it uh, it gives up one proton and it becomes conjugate base OH minus. Whereas carbonate takes up one proton and it becomes bicarbonate group. Hence, it is a conjugate acid of this carbonate. Similarly, in another example, ammonium ion. Ammonium ion is acting as an acid because it is giving up proton and water is acting as a base so in this case you can you can see that water is acting both as an acid and a base acid and a base in in presence of stronger base or stronger acid compared to it 
Okay, so this type of molecules, which acts both as acidic and basic, are called amphoteric substances. Okay. So molecules or ions that accept as well as lose protons are called amphoteric substances from example water. So water can lose in presence of stronger bases, it can lose electron, uh, proton and it becomes, uh, it can act as an acid giving conjugate base OH minus and in presence of stronger acid it can act as a base giving us hydronium ion and, and uh, as a conjugate acid and chloride as a conjugate base okay guys have you understood this much hmm? hello hello yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. okay good so this is the very i want to i want to, i want to start very slowly with this chapter because in the previous uh, chapters i uh, i came to know that I became too fast, so you people fail to understand. I, I think so also because uh, the way you have written in, in the answer sheets, all right. So, so these are the concepts. So any question related to this concept we want to ask, related to this concept, today's concept, we will further develop, okay. I've already made notes and all, so we are work on that. But till now, if you have any doubts, any doubts or uh, anything you want to make clear, I can uh, give answer or or anything. So yeah, so uh, the, see, see here the main takeaway is the acid base actually definitions. I think uh, nobody will, will going to ask, but people will ask why non-metallic oxides are acidic. All right, and not only this, you you'll find it in your practical purposes also. Whenever you use, uh, you do in your lab and all. Whenever you make uh, non-metallic oxides in water and all, if you taste the litmus, you you find it uh, more acidic. pH uh, it becomes more red. So at that time, you should should be able to use your knowledge, this particular knowledge, to come up with ideas because all these things are practical things. This. Uh, all right, so mostly non-metallic oxide, non-metallic compounds land up you in acidic species. Okay, so generally, and mostly metallic, metallic oxides land you up in basic species. Though basicity and acidity uh, changes. So in most of the question, questions, which one is more acidic? Uh, this one. So if I give you the order like this. So... You got to be able to answer why. In the, in the further uh, further classes, I'm going to explain the, strength, the, the relative strength because this kind of question you is very common in your competitive exams as well as uh, in normal exams. Okay, but first you need to understand if they are acidic or not. Then only you can say their acidic strength and all. Okay, all right. So. Why this uh, is acting as a why calcium uh, so oxide solution is uh, basic in nature? So you need to answer via proper uh, equation and derivation. All right, because they are producing OS minus, and as per RNS concept, OS minus is a anything which produces OS minus is a basic in nature. So neutralization reaction is okay. Salt formation in water, salt formation of the salt is formed. This is explained by simply. So limitation of RNA is concerned. In your masters, you have actually this one. It's called non-aqueous solvents. Okay. Uh, in uh, what is non-aqueous non solvents? In masters, you have this uh, chapter. Till now, whatever reactions we are doing, uh, we are studying is in aqueous solvent, mostly water or some uh, other solvent. Mostly water is present, but but in uh, masters, you'll be learning about reactions in non aqueous solvents, reaction which does not contain any water because sometimes water present will destroy your compound. Okay, so in non aqueous, in, in absence of zero presence of water, how reactions occur. Okay, so this is uh, your syllabus in your masters. Okay, at that time we'll study, but still, see this acid, simple acid or basic concept will decide whether your reaction will go undergo or not 
Okay, because most of the reactions biologically and chemically it either acid catalyzes or base catalyzes. In order to understand that uh, acid catalyzes or base catalyzes, you should understand whether the species given is acidic or basic, or what is the strength of acidity and basicity. Sometimes strength of acidity and basicity makes a hell lot of uh, difference. Okay, if you are if H by HCl you are, you are getting ninety percent product. Yeah, if HCl by HCl you are doing sixty percent product product by BF three using Lewis acid you are, you can get ninety percent product. So for a, especially for organic chemistry and all, this uh, strength of acidity matters a lot. Okay, so uh, so and the bronsted lowry concept mostly explain why gases from the HCl is acting as acid because. RNAs only talk about uh, water, but acids not only uh, species not only act uh, so their acidity in water form, but they are so in non aqueous solvents only in gaseous phase only also in sometimes solid phase also they show their uh, acidic properties. Okay, mono -pro mono -pro uh, protonic and polyprotonic you understood. If species contains one proton, then it is monoproton HCl HN3. If they contain more than two or more than two proton, then it's like phosphoric acid, S3PO3, uh, uh, S2SO4, etc. Okay. Now, other than that, okay, monoprotonic and polyprotonic. So, all RNS bases are bases. This I already explained. It's written here also. It's not a big deal. But question will come and should should understand because very simple. H plus since RNS is also giving H plus, Bronsted is also giving H plus. So both are uh, same, but since RNS is giving OS minus, but Bronsted is telling that uh, species has to take up proton, so mm -hmm. that doesn't match, and hence it is not Bronsted base. Okay. Now this this is a very important uh, concept that we have to build on, and I want you to remember this uh, conjugate acid base pairs. Acid always gives you conjugate base. Acid when gives up Proton, it becomes basic. And when base takes up electron, it becomes acidic. Though strength differs, but they, are, they have a conjugate acid base pairs. Okay, the conjugate base of H acid HCl is Cl minus, conjugate uh, acid of NS3 is NS4 plus. So if this concept is built upon, then we can nicely explain the strength of acids in our uh, upcoming classes. So these are the few examples. Now, some species they they act both as an acidic uh, acid ex proton acceptor and proton loser, and they are called uh, amphoteric substances. So water is mostly amphoteric. So most of the reaction pH of the water is what? How much? pH of distilled water, pure water is how much? Around seven, right? Okay. So pH, water acts as a medium, and and sometimes it can act as a or acid also sometimes you can, can act as a base also depending upon the depending upon the environmental conditions so this is the this is today's how many of you are present this is today's uh, class okay and 16 of you are present and uh, what to call that um, I hope I, uh, you have understood this one. Okay, this much. Then further, in the, from next class onwards, I'll go a bit uh, further and more syllabus I'll put in. But since this is the first class on our acid base, uh, I'll, I would like to stop here only. And best of luck. Tomorrow we have got, got class, right? Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, tomorrow we, go, we have got class and tomorrow we'll do. And other than that, uh, yeah. Please uh, uh, message me in WhatsApp. I'll send you your answer script. All right. And those who wants to sit for improvement for a test, they can sit. It's not mandatory though, but those who wants to. All right. They can sit for the test, and I'll be will be I'll be taking it in your Google Classroom only. But the thing is, if you get if now you have got ten marks, but in the retest you get eight marks, then eight marks will be calculated. The retest marks will only be incorporated. So this is a chance I have given it to you. Those who are willing to sit for test, they can sit for test.
Okay, guys. Four weeks. 